There are some fish that feel like a great idea to buy when you're in your local fish shop, and that are so stunning you ignore all the negative experiences you read about online and listen only to the positives. So today I'll tell you the top five fish I regret buying the most, and make sure you watch to the end when I'll show you the most fearsome and aggressive fish in the world. First on the list is a fish that will disappoint a lot of you because it is one of the most popular fish in the entire hobby, blue-green chromis. They have a beautiful bright colour, shimmering scales, they're relatively small, cheap to buy, reef safe, and of course they are a shoaling fish, which is the holy grail of fish behaviour. And it's for all those reasons that I bought seven for my first ever reef tank. However, the reality is that they need a lot of food because they are constantly swimming, and pumping in loads of food will likely lead to your tank experiencing high nitrate and phosphate levels. They also constantly fight with each other and bully one another to death, usually until you only have one left in your tank. And as if that's not enough, they don't even form a tight shoal. The only time they shoal together closely is if something spooks them and they all join together for just a few seconds until the coast is clear. And in my only experience with blue-green chromis, they were a major case of expectation versus reality. Next up is the Scarus Koi parrotfish. Now I subscribe to the theory that occasionally it's worth taking a punt on a fish that is described as reef safe with caution. And on that subject, if you want more videos like this, you should subscribe to the channel. With the Scarus Koi parrotfish, it is hard not to love them. There are plenty of reports online that these guys behave perfectly, and you'll even see the term model citizen bandied around. They have absolutely awesome and completely unique colours, they eat algae, and they even have a smiley face for heaven's sake. But that smiley face is a lot less lovable when it's being stuffed full of your most expensive corals. Now my Scarus Koi parrotfish took to chewing at the bases of my SPS corals, and presumably because he wanted to goad me, he chose the most expensive frags I've ever bought, which were two one-inch frags for £150 each. Now it is entirely possible that he was either just sharpening his teeth or chewing through the coral to get to the base of the frag plug. And if the only coral he munched on was my invasive Tropic Thunder Monty, he might still be in the tank to this day. But because he started munching on my most expensive corals within three days of going in the tank, it wasn't a risk I was prepared to take. So I caught him in a fish trap and took him back to my local fish shop, who gave me one third of what I paid for him in the first place in store credit. First on the podium is another shoaling fish, Longfin or Resplendent Anthias. Now after my first experience with shoaling fish in the form of Chromis, I was a little more wise and I did a lot more research. And I found reliable sources that said Longfin Anthias were pretty much the easiest to feed of all the Anthias and least likely to fight each other to the death. So this time I bought eight females and one male for my four foot by two foot tank. And for the first 18 months, I felt vindicated. They looked absolutely stunning with bright pink colors, they fed really easily, and they didn't really fight. But of course, if something feels too good to be true, it usually is. And that sadly proved to be the case with these guys. Firstly, their colors faded, presumably because I wasn't meeting their dietary needs. And that meant that they went from a vivid bright pink to this dull, drab, boring pink. And then came the scrapping and bullying. First it started slowly, and then it happened all at once. And at the peak of the aggression, I felt like I was finding a new Anthea's dead pretty much every single week, which is really disheartening to see. Now it's entirely possible that despite my best efforts, I either wasn't feeding them enough, or I wasn't feeding them enough of the right foods. But whatever the reason, my experiences with blue-green Anthea's and now resplendent Anthea's has put me off shoaling fish for life. And the runner-up is the rather beautiful purple tang. To my eye, the purple tang is the most stunning of all tangs. It has an unusual deep purple body covered in lines of black dots and a really bright yellow tail that contrasts beautifully against the body. And of course, I found him to be an absolute destroyer of algae, so for a time he was my favorite fish. However, as mine grew older, he became an absolute ass. He'd constantly harass certain fish and chase them around the tank pretty much all day, which I found really stressful to watch. In particular, he used to attack my fox face, which is one of my favorite fish. And as soon as I introduced a copper band, the purple tang just wouldn't leave him alone. I found him absolutely brutal with the copper band. And while I tried putting a mirror up to distract him, that didn't work for more than a few days. And I just can't abide bullies. So I whipped him out as soon as I could and sold him to a fellow hobbyist. Reef tanks are supposed to be relaxing and the purple tang gave me nothing but stress, which is why he places second on this list. And number one on my list is the Harlequin Tuskfish, but this isn't the fearsome and aggressive fish I mentioned at the start. I'll show you him next. Now you can probably see where this is going just by looking at him. He has teeth like a vampire and he's built like Mike Tyson. But despite that, many people online describe them as a very timid fish. 
and that description combined with his stocky looks made me think of John Coffey from the film The Green Mile. So with that coupled with the spectacular colours and stripes and even teeth that glow blue, I couldn't resist. But after lulling me into a full sense of security for the first few months, things started to go sour. And when I say sour, I'm talking Texas Chainsaw Massacre sour. His first victim was my red-headed Solon Rass, which was a fish I used to feed by hand. The Solon Rass was really peaceful, but for whatever reason, the Harlequin Tusk just wouldn't leave him alone. The second the Rass came out of his cave, the Tusk was on him, chasing him around the tank until he went back into his cave. The poor Rass looked petrified the whole time, he wouldn't even come out to eat, and he ended up dying before I could catch and remove him. Then the Tusk decided to explore shellfish and went for one of my cleaner shrimp. Now it was a little more predictable that one of my cleaner shrimp would go that way, but it was no less upsetting watching it happen, and the tusk was absolutely brutal. But the final straw came when I added a jawfish, who swam straight into the harlequin tusk's cave, and was instantly attacked and eaten within three seconds of going into my tank. Now the tusk was just exhibiting his natural behaviours, so this was of course all my fault, but nonetheless for his crimes, I sentenced him to capture and a return to my local fish shop, plus of course number one spot on my list of fish I regret. And now for the most fearsome and aggressive fish in the world that I mentioned at the start. There are no words to describe him, so I'll just leave you with this clip. Just don't watch it before you go to bed.